And my name is Gerald Marion. I'm uh, John K. Bird. My name's Dan Tegan. Name is, there's various names I, <laughs> and aliases I use, but <laughs> my given name is James, James Norman. Um, growing up, I was Jimmy, and then <laughs> my dad started thinking that was silly and called me, called me Jim, and then started painting, and oh, that doesn't look very good as a signature. Use James. <laughs> That's, anyway, that's, that's the main part of me. I'm an artist who uh, lives uh, in Moxville, uh, a wife and two sons and seven grandchildren. Uh, I've been an artist uh, mostly my uh, entire life, beginning at early age of uh, first to second grade, uh, drawing pictures or whatever of uh, what cowboys and Indians. And uh, later after, uh, Graduated from high school. I uh, worked a while in at Western Electric. Uh, after about three years, decided to uh, pursue a, a career in art and uh, enrolled in uh, Ringland, Ringland School of Art in Sarasota, Florida, uh, where I studied commercial illustration and design. Uh, graduated in 1964 and. Uh, uh, Got uh, got married immediately after that, and uh, I did uh, land a job in Richmond, Virginia, in an art studio where I worked uh, uh, for about th three years, and then uh, uh, decided to take a job in Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, in another uh, art studio where I did uh, design and illustration. Uh, from there, I was able to. Uh, get a job with uh, R.J. Reynolds um, in the uh, uh, graphic communications department. Uh, I was an illustrator and worked there for a little over 10 years, where unfortunately I uh, was uh, laid off from that job uh, with uh, thousands of other workers at that particular time in the mid-80s. Uh, but I was um, also fortunate enough to have my own studio at home where I worked in illustration, uh, freelance illustration for a number of years and I finally uh, decided that um, I no longer wanted to do that and uh, uh, at that particular time focused on uh, just uh, paintings of uh, landscapes and also uh, portrait commissions which uh, was my basic uh, kind of, of work. The, the portraits uh, was something that I had done um, many of those when I worked with the R.J. Reynolds portraits of uh, executives who retired. In uh, 1984, I was uh, fortunate enough to do, uh, to be commissioned to do a portrait of President Reagan that was um, assigned to uh, hang in the uh, uh, Presidential Library in California. And I assume that's where it, uh, the, the portrait is still hanging. And anyway, that was uh, really a, a fortunate thing to do. That did help my uh, uh, portrait business quite a lot. Uh, I was also fortunate enough to uh, uh, meet uh, Andy Griffith um, in the uh, late uh, 70s and uh, he commissioned me to do a portrait of Pilot Mountain at that time and I was able to uh, uh, ship that to California. And today I still, uh, I still do uh, portraits uh, occasionally but I uh, really do enjoy uh, landscape painting and uh, uh, my favorite thing to do in the, my landscapes is to always, always uh, put a number of uh, animals in the uh, in the paintings that uh, people enjoy looking for when they are looking at the painting. And uh, in the background, many times uh, the uh, the famous landmark of Pilot Mountain. So uh, anyway, that's basically what uh, my entire life has been: is, is just painting and drawing, which I uh, enjoy doing yet and. Uh, uh, Hopefully, uh, I still have not done my best work. Um, uh, each time I do a painting, I, I do uh, uh, think, well, this is going to be the, the best one yet. So um, we'll see what happens from there. And I live in Greensboro. I'm retired, and I like to putz around in art and wood carving. When I was in kindergarten, I drew a squirrel and did a robin and I took it in and the teacher said you didn't do that <laughs> so that, w that was my start into art I apparently I had it I had I enjoyed animals and 
birds and, and uh, animals. I, I like to uh, drawing pictures of those. And then um, I, I, when I lived in California back in 1947, in the summer they would uh, turn the uh, high school into classrooms for the recreation department. They, you could take knitting or wood carving or art or and I took the wood carving class. So I was, uh, I think about 12 years old when I started wood carving and I, I enjoyed that. Never had any formal training. Whatever I like to do, I give it a try. My dad was a real good artist. He could sketch, um, just sketch anything. Like uh, what I remember, I mean, he'd draw like a lady's head, you know, with the nice, nose and he'd go right down and he'd do the two lips and it would look beautiful. Or he would draw a, a horse's head and I, so I, I like I like doing horses. You always follow in your dad's footsteps. I liked, uh, I, I tried acrylics and they didn't work out too good for me but I like using, I like to paint in oils and uh, uh, I did some watercolors and I, I like that. My dad was a fisherman, and so now I'm, I'm doing a picture of my dad pulling in a rainbow trout, and uh, you know, with the big trout out of the water, and uh, I'm working on that now. But uh, when something comes in the mind, you know, I see something, I, oh, I, I, and I, I want to draw it. Uh, an artist uh, slash picture framer. Uh been an artist most of my adult life over the past 45 years. Grew up in Greensboro, studied art in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and uh, worked at various galleries around the Greensboro area when I moved back. Uh, and uh, my passion is just painting uh, in all different mediums, uh, from oil to watercolor to mixed medium to sketching, Pencils, crayons, ink, you know, whatever. Whatever I can find in my hands, you know, to put on a, even a ballpoint pen and a sketchbook on the river rock, you know, I'd be happy just uh, creating work. I think my first early works were acrylic on something they called canvas set, which was like a sketchbook with, with canvas, sort of a canvas pad. And uh, I basically copied uh, calendars. Uh, I think some of my earlier works were in 72 and 3 when I was 11 and 12 years old. Uh, and I uh, was sort of a naturalist, you know, so a, a lot of my work revolved around nature, birds, animals, wildlife, landscape. And then as, as I evolved, I started doing pet portraits for people, uh, house portraits, sort of branched out, you know, with my subject matter, uh, so to speak and uh, predominantly worked in acrylic. Uh, watercolor came a little later, oils still a little bit later after art school. I studied advertising design, you know, commercial art, where <laughs> my associate of science degree <laughs> yeah. is. But uh, uh, after it was all said and done, I ended up you know, being a studio and gallery picture framer uh, after I came back from Florida in 1981. And so, I've been fortunate to have many outlets and many sort of vocations and careers and jobs, you know, anything from building trusses to uh, Dutch barns to being a zookeeper for five years, uh, working at uh, Lowe's Home Improvement for eight years, um, and then all points in between. Uh, but I've always been pretty active, you know, with, you know, with my palette and brush. And, uh, when I'm not actually, you know, doing my professional and freelance picture framing on the side to uh, support myself. I would call myself a chameleon, uh, so to speak. I like old buildings, uh, landmarks, you know, I guess what I might call a vanishing human and natural heritage, you know, in a, in a world where digital technology and rapid modern growth and development are taking over at a breathtaking speed. Uh, for instance, this is my latest piece, which is entitled Gunter's Store. It's a mixed-medium painting, uh, 
It's done from an old photograph. I work from photographs, I work from uh, life, I work uh, anything I can get my hands on I work from. And this store actually was uh, in Greensboro and it burned down I believe in 1988. Uh, a car ran over the gas pumps and now of course it's replaced uh, with something much more modern. Uh, but once again uh, mixed medium pencil, watercolor, acrylic, uh, crayon, opaque treatments as well as transparent uh, treatments. Uh, then of course uh, to give you an idea of some of my other styles, as I said I'm more of a chameleon, uh, uh, pencil, pastel, marker, uh, on brown paper using white Conte crayons and chalk for highlights. Uh, and then of course, uh, oil, which yeah, is one of my other fortes. They take longer to dry. You know, as Jim mentioned, oil, turpentine, a nice odor in the house. <laughs> <laughs> the, the beauty though is, you know, the longer you do it, sometimes the better. Whereas when you're doing a watercolor, it's perhaps like uh, downhill skiing is 80% prep and then all of a sudden you're then you're through. So I find watercolor to be a more difficult medium but uh, if it, uh, depending on the job of the commission or whatever I'm working on, uh, it dictates which you know, medium I do use, whether oil, watercolor, acrylic, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, been painting, about like Dan, I guess about 40, gosh, I hate to think of it, about 45 years. Um, do all kinds of uh, different medium, but primary, mostly concentrating oils now. Done some acrylics, done mixed media things. Used to, did a lot of watercolors back in the, I guess way back in, way back now in the 80s. <laughs> but uh, the uh, painting in terms of what I'm doing now is, like I said, mostly oils. Uh, it, it's just it, you can get a lot more depth. Um, I like the I like the heaviness of it. Uh, the smell of it can get a bit annoying, but <laughs> but there's just something about the luscious look of oil paint that I really like. I remember as a kid in the second grade, it's the first memory I have of it. I was able to draw a cowboy on a horse and. It looked kind of better than a lot of the other kids. I'm like, well, maybe I'm okay at this, and, and I never really pursued it much. And uh, uh, just, and just every now and then would do some things. Took some regular, you know, school art classes and that kind of thing. And then when I got out of um, high school, I needed to do something that would sound like something I could maybe make a living at. <laughs> so I, I took uh, commercial art at Guilford Technical Institute. It, it, now it's Guilford Community College. They, once they got rid of me, they, they upgraded it to a college. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, um, they um, sort of, they did discipline you there, and it was, but it was advertising design. It wasn't, it wasn't painting or anything, but I remember we took a, we did take like a, a what do you call it, like a road trip thing, our class to go, go to a museum and we saw some, saw some, just looked at some paintings and I thought, I was looking at them and I thought, well, I can, I could do that. And, and then I just kind of, I had been doing drawings and still did drawings throughout my, when I was in, took commercial art in, in, in school. And then the painting, I had kind of got, I just, decided I'd start to try that. This was about 70, 1975 or so. And um, so as I say, the rest is history. I just kind of got hooked on it. And, and I was working mostly, I guess, painting in my dad's basement. <laughs> Mom and dad's basement, bless their hearts. <laughs> um, but um, anyway, just it's the kind of thing, it's just kind of in your, gets in your blood. I don't necessarily recommend it for trying to make a living at it like I'm trying to do, but but it's sort of an addiction and you just, you get into it and it's kind of hard to stop. I remember 
uh, I, was, I was listening to an interview with William de Kooning and he said something about him and when things were tough during the Depression era and and he, he, he said something about they had to choose sometimes whether to eat or to buy a tube of cadmium red. <laughs> but you know, you just, you get, this stuff gets in your blood and, and it's hard to, hard to, um, hard to stop it, <laughs> even if you want to. I've threatened to quit, I threaten to quit about every month. <laughs> I'm done with this and then, well, I'll work a little bit more. <laughs> but the arts were not encouraged that much when I was growing up. And, and, and there, there still may not be as, as much as they should, in my opinion. A lot of schools have cut out their programs. I mean, we had school programs, but you know, you just didn't, you just didn't do that kind of thing when I was growing up. Nobody messed with that. You were just, you were viewed as a sissy. <laughs> I mean, really, I, you just, you know, you just that was something other, you know, people on the other side of the tracks did. So I didn't, I didn't pursue much like I should have when I was younger. I could have done it, but I just didn't have a desire for it other than other than thinking, well, maybe this is something I'll do sometime. And then you get older and you go, oh, I've got to choose something to do here. <laughs> and, I, and I chose the, the commercial art program simply because it had commercial in front of it and, it, and I convinced mom and dad much easier that, <laughs> that, that there might be a uh, way to make a living at this <laughs> but it wasn't it, it wasn't what I really enjoyed doing I, I was sort of disappointed in the commercial program because I thought I had this vision that I would be like the next Norman Rockwell and doing illustrations and then and then I, I found out you really had to go to New York or <laughs> whatever to land a job like that and I mean I ended up in printing and stuff like that that was just pre-press work and I couldn't find much in the way of doing something for a company so I just took up the painting on my own uh, and just let's, let's see what I can do with it. My process, uh, well uh, I tend to start out with, uh, I see a, uh, when I'm traveling around in the country or wherever, uh, uh, I'll notice a particular scene that I think might make uh, an, an, an interest in painting and uh, uh, of course, from at that time, I'll usually take many, many photographs to get the best angle, the best light, or whatever, and uh, go back to my studio and make prints of those and get the reference I need. And uh, if I'm doing a landscape painting, of course, I do a, a, a pretty careful, uh, detailed pencil sketch first, uh, maybe eight by ten, and uh, after that, I will, uh, if I like the pencil, I think it's it's, it's still. Uh, uh, going to make a, a, an interest in painting and worthwhile to spend all the time. I'll put the, uh, my uh, pencil sketch in a uh, uh, camera Lucy and uh, blow that up to uh, my uh, size that I'm going to paint and do the pencil sketch on, my, on the canvas. And from there just uh, start laying in the colors and working from the, uh, my pencil sketch and the photographs. And uh, of course if I, have, uh, if I have animals in the painting, I will, uh, of course uh, it's easy to get reference from different kinds of animals and mostly that's my uh, process for uh, for landscape painting but portraits are of course as you imagine might quite different uh, if somebody commissions a portrait uh, I'll just work out the uh, details with them as far as uh, uh, what kind of setting they would are looking for and sometimes a, uh, a client may have existing photos that they want me to paint from which I'm happy to do but I would I really do prefer doing the uh, uh, the portrait from my from my own photos and interviewing the client and taking taking photos with the best possible lighting and, and uh, from there of course I will do a um, a really pretty careful detailed pencil study uh, again about eight by ten or eight and a half by eleven of the uh, for the portrait uh, and then uh, uh, get the client's approval from that uh, pencil sketch at that time they they might suggest some changes or make uh, possible suggestions for um, something else that'd like to be included in the background and and, and then I will do a, a, a get approval from that and go ahead and start the, uh, the painting process on canvas. Again I will put my uh, pencil sketch on my uh, uh, enlarger and, and uh, do a careful drawing on the canvas and paint uh, from there uh, the uh, 
and of course from my color photos and, and color notes that I made when I interviewed the client. And sometimes I'll get, uh, I will send a, uh, a, a photo, uh, email a photo of the painting to the client and sort of in the middle of the process, make sure that uh, I'm on target if it's what they're looking for. So most of the time that's, that works out pretty well. Anywhere from uh, uh, 35 to 50 hours, uh, generally speaking, 24 by 30 life size portrait painting. It, it, it depends on the size and complexity of the uh, background, of course, and, and, uh, and many times a uh, painting of a, a, of a female would naturally take a bit longer because uh, there's more uh, to think about as far as the hair uh, style that they, that they are wearing at the time and the, also the, uh, uh, the clothing and, and if it's de depends on the uh, details on the clothing and those kinds of things. Of course I also do the uh, uh, Prisma pencil uh, portraits uh, which is a black and white uh, process that uh, using a, a black Prisma color pencil along with the white for uh, highlights. And uh, again, uh, people sometimes will send me photos they want me to work from, and then also I do take my own photos for, for those kinds of uh, pencil uh, portrait projects. And they take anywhere from six to, eight, six to eight hours, maybe ten hours, depending on the, again, the details and what, what the background might be. I um, usually do a, a soft lead sketch on, on canvas. And then uh, start, once I get the sketch on, I start filling it in with uh, the colors and, and blending. I like oils because they're, they blend well and uh, you, you can put the retard in it and make it last for a long time. Bill, I, I know you can do the same with acrylics, but I have, <laughs> I, it just don't, I guess you get used to a certain medium and you, you tend to stick with uh, something that, you're, that works well for you. I, Usually, if I look at something, I can draw it. I have done uh, silhouettes, you know, a person or a child turns sideways and you do the profile, you know, the small thing and put a little bow in their hair and little lacy sleeves. Uh, I like doing that. I took uh, drafting in high school. I took architecture, uh, mechanical drawing and then took architectural drafting. Uh, my last year in high school, and so I, I, I like uh, uh, to paint street scenes with the, the uh, perspective is what I was thinking about. Uh, paintings are pretty slow for me. I, I would say 30 to 40 hours, because I, 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 I like a lot of detail, and a lot of people don't like a lot of detail. They like a lot of color and a fast project. I, I like, I don't mind if it takes a long time. Mm -hmm. Wood sculptures are another slow project. <laughs> yeah, that varies uh, in subject matter. If I see something, if I see a horse, you know, I put it in my mind and then the next time I sit down, I like to sketch what I, I've seen earlier. I, li I like all, all the animals. The thing about uh, wood carving, it's, it's a little dusty, so you have to get prepared for it and do it in one setting and, and come back to it another day. So my process varies, but uh, it generally starts from uh, sketches, thumbnail sketches, ballpoint pen, pencil sketches, sometimes, a lot of times in a journal or a sketchbook, and then may evolve to the stretch canvas or the primed oil board uh, if, I, if I'm lucky enough. We were in Saxapaha yesterday on the Hall River. Uh, once again, I had a journal, you know, all I had was an ink pen and I was doing some sketching. So that process may start, you know, if it turns into a painting, it started right there in my journal. Uh, but I, I, like Robert Bateman would say, you know, is it a sin to use photographs or not a sin or are we going to go to heaven if you, you know, don't, <laughs> if you use photos, you know, rather than you know, work from life, you know, and to create your own composition. My approach, just like my life itself, is very erratic. <laughs> um, and, yeah. and it's, if, if I'm using photos, or, I mean, they're, they're photos that I take, I want to make that pretty clear, or very clear, you know, I'm, I'm not into swiping people's ideas. Um, but I, I use um, 
photo is more as just a starting point. When I first started painting, I, I kind of got addicted to using photos and I would be too like, okay, I, I'm, I, I'm gonna have to do it just like the photo looks because I just didn't know any better. It was just ignorance on my part. And then later on I realized that, that that's, that's a hindrance. It's, it's good to get, give you a starting point, but it's kind of good if you just put the photo put the photo away and let paint out of your out of your head and sometimes I'll I'll, I'll do what one would call studies little it's just it's it's an idea of and and thinking something's going to come behind this it might be a, a drawing on a you know 8 by 10 piece of paper or something and it's going to end up being a 30 by 40 canvas but it gives you working out an idea uh, and, and sometimes that you can have a photo that you've taken and think, okay, here's, here's what I kind of want to do, but I want, it to, I want it to go in this direction right now. But the other thing I don't worry as much about now, I, I waste a lot of time worried about, oh, I'm going away from what the subject looked like. Well, later on I found that my better paintings were the ones that I kind of went away from <laughs> what the subject was going to be. Uh, it just it, more, more interesting. I work on stuff until I kind of get bored with it, and then I want to just I want to try something else because I, if I don't keep excited about what I'm doing, I, I won't. Um, I'm not going to want to do it. This is oil on canvas, and it's more reflective of of the stuff I'm doing now. I've always kind of jumped around a bit in terms of. Uh, as Dan can testify to, I have some very tight, uh, somber, realistic. Uh, realistic stuff, very almost photorealistic. I mean, well, even past that, almost uber realism, if you would, you know. Um, maybe it looks even realer than a photo. You've seen some of the things I've got. Uh, I'm just, I can't motivate myself. I mean, money helps a little bit, but you really need something a little more than money to motivate you. You've got to have you know, some burning desire to get it done. And I'm always looking at stuff, <clears throat> discovering new artists and thinking, oh, that's cool. Oh, well, I gotta try this, you know. <laughs> I, I, I can't be, I can't be satisfied. I'm like, okay, well, that's all right, but let's try it this way. I think it's like food. I mean, who wants to eat the same kind of food all the time, you know? You, you want a variety and, and the, the musician, Joni Mitchell, uh, has gotten into painting. She said the one thing about um, music that she didn't like as much as, say, painting, because she said the thing with painting, you can just kind of do different things. They didn't yell at Van Gogh, hey, do another story night. <laughs> you know, you just, <laughs> and, 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 and she had to sort of, with music, you, you know, you get your hit songs and you got to keep playing them over and over. And the beauty of painting is, you can just go and explore something totally new. I always look forward to, uh, uh, with some apprehension, of course, uh, unveiling the portrait, uh, you know, to uh, the client, and sometimes family members might be there, and you just never know exactly what to expect. But that's sort of uh, probably the most exciting part of it, is, and and of course, it's always great if everybody's really extremely happy and congratulatory, all those things. It's it's. Uh, but you don't know for sure until it, until it happens. I really do prefer uh, landscape painting over portraits, although uh, portraits is, I guess that's sort of a natural inclination for me. From early childhood, I always like to draw people and, and, uh, and do sketches of people when they are not looking and, and uh, that kind of thing. And, but uh, portraits, of course, is, is more, stressful in a way and knowing that you're you're uh, working on something that's going to be pleasing or you're going to try to please somebody uh, at times some people don't see themselves quite like I would see them but of course and they, they might have a different opinion about you know things like uh, the size of the ears <laughs> or the nose or whatever uh, but uh, and landscapes, of course, it's, it's much more, uh, I, I really don't have to please anybody else but myself. And, and I just enjoy doing it, knowing that, that what I'm doing uh, 
I don't have to worry about somebody else coming along and saying, well, that doesn't look like me. Most excited. Uh, just capturing a likeness sometimes. I'm rather keen on doing portraits, once again, you know, uh, from photos. Uh, I really enjoyed life drawing in art school. Uh, I worked uh, on a lot of portraits, had a lot of uh, models come and sit for me when I lived in Summerfield. Uh, so I guess the, when you said you know, excitement, it would be in the fact of uh, the challenge. You know, did I did I capture their likeness, or did I uh, did I graze it? You know, did I uh, make her nose too big, or you know, her legs too wide, or whatever? Uh, so that excites me, uh, just the sheer fact of working live from a live model, uh, or even uh, an animal. If I'm doing plein air, mm. sketching at the zoo, or you know. Just the the sheer act of being in a like what I would call a zone, uh, where my mind is away from everything else, you know, and it's sometimes tedious, you know, uh, and it's but it's exhilarating and, and it's exciting. So I guess just the process of having the pencil or the brush or the pen or the crayon or uh, whatever it may be in my hand and actually working and being right in the moment while I'm doing it, that's about as exciting as it, it gets for me. I need to get enough excitement in it to do it, you know, first of all. Otherwise, I'm just going to quit. But it, it's not, painting is one of those things, it's not a thrill a minute. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a lot of, a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Um, you're going through this process just like you're listening to music or something and there's just a certain part of a song that just really hits you and it just carries you on through the rest of the song and and and, and painting to me is kind of like that you 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 go and and you're you're looking for a few seconds of ecstasy through all the drudgery because <laughs> you go wow it's coming together it's coming yeah. together so what is your favorite color my favorite color Mmm, well that's a tough one. I think probably uh, in the teal uh, range of colors, which ranges from blue to green uh, in, that, in that area, and uh, a little more to, to the uh, green side, side possibly, uh, uh, but of course uh, I have many other colors I really enjoy working with, but uh, I, guess, I guess that sort of color does tend to uh, enter into my, my uh, palette from time to time without me even thinking about it. Uh, all at once I realize that I'm using that color more than it's some of the other colors I plan to use. So apparently that does uh, uh, appeal to me somewhat to, in that teal range. Red. Why? Well, it's a warm color. It's primary color. <laughs> primary color. And my second color is blue, which is the cool. But I tend to go with earthy, or earthy colors. My favorite color uh, would probably have to be uh, green. Or is hazel a color? <laughs> a greenish gray? Uh, no, I would, I would say probably gray. Why? Uh, I think it just represents the natural world, it represents uh, growth, life whole photosynthesis process. Uh, I love to garden, so I like uh, the color of the beans and the peas and the tomatoes and when they all come up they're all green. Uh, it's a toss-up between green and gray, uh, which I might call hazel. It changes quite a bit. I get in a mood about color. Um, I mean if I had to just, just pick one, there's Nothing that, that to me that can make a painting pop more than putting a little turquoise in, but it's a dangerous color because it's very strong and it'll draw your eye a lot. So you've got to you got to use it sparingly. But it's a, it's a, it's a great color, and I mean I love I love Viridian, which is a, a green of a bluish 
bluish green for the person who doesn't paint. Um, and I add a kick where I like dioxazine purple. Uh, just I'm really in love for that for a few, for a few months. It's, it's, it's like, once again, sort of like really enjoying a certain type of food. <laughs> you like that, you like that food for that period of time. And then you're you're just you're you're, you're tired of it. So it, it's it's constantly changing. Comfort food. Yeah. <laughs> My goodness, uh, probably uh, pizza. I would say. <laughs> I guess pizza uh, with all the toppings, uh, except mushrooms. I do like the pineapple and pizza. Pineapple and ham. That's one of my favorites. And as for dessert, uh, uh, any kind of a fruit pie, like peach pie, apple pie. Uh, Blackberry cobbler, uh, those kinds of um, treats that uh, uh, appeal to me as far as on, on the dessert side. Uh, right now, it's uh, steamed shrimp with obey uh, obey uh, seasoning. I read it like that. Oh gosh, just about <laughs> anything. <laughs> oh me, I, I mm, what man? I don't know. I mean, there's so many, so many foods that I like. I eat a lot of chicken, and I don't eat much red meat anymore. I, I would like to give up all meat and and any chicken. Everything. I would, I would love to be a vegetarian, <laughs> and and I'm 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 vegetarian friendly, but I can't quite do it just yet. I, I I've really started to be bothered a lot by eating red meat. Not because I don't like it, it's just because I don't like hypocrisy and that's one, I think that's one place in my life that um, I, I'm a bit hypocritical because I still enjoy eating meats. I, I think it would be a better world if we didn't consume our fellow creatures on this earth, but I grew up, you know, I'm an old guy <laughs> and, and I grew up. In, in a family that we, we, we ate meat, but just what we did. And, um, um, but I'm, I'm moving sort of, kind of moving away from that, just more, not, not, not flavor wise, because cause I still, I said, I still love chicken and stuff, but anyway. Comfort food, beef jerky, Thai, and pizza. I could have any superpower. I think to fly. That's a good question. Goodness, uh, to be uh, computer savvy, <laughs> technology, to know how to uh, make my own website, to uh, run my computer competently, or <laughs> for that matter, my Android. Uh, so, uh, to me, that would empower me, which would therefore be a superpower, if I were able to be uh, very uh, computer savvy. In my in my life, in, in relation to, to painting, I will say this about uh, you, you talking about superpower. There there was there was a thing, and it, Andrew Wyeth once said about he wasn't nobody asking about a superpower, but but he was saying if I could be invisible, I could just sort of float around and and, and like do a drawing of you, friends or, or Dan, any any of us, and and the um, the sitter wouldn't be. You know, posing and doing all this, that would be very natural, and he could just, you know, move move around and and and, and not be noticed. He thought that was really, 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 really cool to be to be invisible. That might be a good one. <laughs>
advertising uh, and involve figures and people, uh, it's very important to uh, study and, and paint and, and draw people uh, and sketch people in all kind of poses and actions. If you uh, draw something and you don't succeed, do it again. Repetition, because you, you improve with, uh, with repetition. The lesson I wish I had learned a long time ago, and, and the thing that, that, that's, that stays in, in my head about, uh, I mentioned this before to people, the one th thing that gets me, how hard it is to make something of your life, but a couple of seconds of a bad decision can just destroy it. Enjoy life, but at the same time, you better watch your step, because because a couple of bad decisions can really mess your life up bad. Uh, that's 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 sort of a, a life advice, but <laughs> but in terms of 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 towards the arts, just do it all. If you're if you want to be good at it, you got to do it all the time. You can't just piddle at it. Uh, and 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 if you're wanting to st study painting. Drawing is the bone structure of painting, so draw all the time. Don't be, don't ever be caught without access to uh, charcoal and paper, pastel and paper, pencil paper, whatever. Something where you can get something down. Um, and or I mean, it's also good to have. You know, I, t I take a lot of photos. Those are those are nice to record things, but it's better if you got something handy. I don't know. When I drove over here, I don't know if I have any drawing paper in the in the car or not, but but uh, I certainly have have my camera and it be be open to recording everything around you. Uh, every everything is there's art everywhere. It's just a matter of opening opening your eyes to it. Follow your heart and your passion, and realize that everything is impermanent. That everything constantly changes and. The road you're on today might not be the road you're on tomorrow. And so enjoy every moment and uh, just be passionate and uh, thankful and grateful and mindful in each day and in each moment. Mm -hmm.